Hi, this is Kevin Markman. Welcome to Relationship Ready Talks. Today, we have TJ Wolf. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. Good stuff. All right, we talk about relationships, and we're going to hear about a relationship today. So before we do that, let's hear a little bit about TJ. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, not not too much to tell. Um, I do a theater and, and comedy locally in the city, Rochester, if you weren't sure. Um, just got back into town recently. Glad to be back. Glad to be here. Right. Thank you for having me tonight. Well, welcome back. Thanks for coming back to town, too. It's nice to see you. My absolute pleasure. All right. So we're going to hear about a relationship. So tell us about the beginning of this relationship. How did it start and what happened from there? Uh, so her and I uh, uh, started seeing each other romantically when we were 18, like uh, fresh, fresh out of high school. Uh, and her and I had actually known each other our, our entire lives. Uh, her mother and my mother had been best friends since they were in about fifth grade. You know, we were born two weeks apart. We grew up in the same town. So we've, you know, known each other literally our, our entire lives. And hung out together. With yeah, immediately. And oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And, uh, you know, one night we were just uh, at, at a party. Um, we were both there. Uh, we ended up just sort of, you know, making out for a little while and getting together and that just sort of snowballed into what ended up being a five year long relationship. Okay, so was there attraction before that or when did you first notice there was the attraction? Um, I mean, it came out later that like throughout the years intermittently, her and I would, would think of one another like that, but that party was like the first actual, you know, okay. after a few hours of like hanging out and like drinking together and then, you know, yep. bumping into each other, then bumping in and staying next to each other. Okay. You know, turning into cuddles, turning into us going upstairs and that sort of thing. Okay. So there was a friendship beforehand and yes. a family connection. Right. Um, yes. That was the beginning of the relationship. And then the actual uh, attraction started at this party when you were 18. And where, did, sure. it, where did it progress from there? Um, so we, we stayed together for about half a decade. Um, it was my first long-term relationship. It was her first relationship in general. Um, uh, we were uh, we had just gotten out of high school, so she spent about a year going to college in Ohio. I spent a year flunking out of community college here. Uh, she ended up transferring uh, to a local college, Brockport. Did you stay connected while yes. she was away? Yeah. Doing that too? Okay. Yeah, we did so the whole dating distance during thing. that time too? Yes. Okay. All right. And how was that during the distance time? It didn't seem so bad for me, but I was, you know, I was also home and didn't have the discomfort and challenge of like being in a new place at like an actual competitive college. I'm sure it was much, much more difficult for her, but, okay. you know, she stuck through it and made it work, didn't make excuses or anything like that. So, okay. so it was working during that time. Yes. And then she came back here. Yep. At some point, how long into it was that? Um, maybe two semesters. Okay. So yeah, not not quite a year, not quite a calendar year. Okay. And what happened at that point? Uh, you know, she'd stay at my house several nights. I'd stay at her house. You know, we eventually just end up getting a house together for a while. Okay. So not, were you both living at home? Uh, yes. And she was home, and then yeah, and then we together, and then found a place together. Yes. Within a few months, or within a year, no, or it was or about how long about happen? two and a half, maybe three years in. We we did the whole get in the house thing. Okay. And then we went deep. Like we got a couple cats, a dog, the whole. Okay. So you created your own uh, late teen, early twenties family of cats and cats and dogs. Yeah. Oh, sure. And yes. uh, in your own place. And launched launched from home and, and doing that. We felt very much like adults. Okay. At the time. Okay. Yeah, yes. And uh, and was this first love for you for her for? Um, definitely for her. It was first successful uh, and like mutual and return love for me, which is you know that's a nice. Important. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. So you're living together at this point, and what are you both doing, and how are you getting along, and how are things going? So, uh, she, for for most of this time, is, you know, continuing her school. She uh, she graduated from, like, real colleges a couple of times. Like, she has, like, multiple degrees, so a lot of her time was spent studying in school, right? Yeah. And, and uh, she and her family comes from money, so she was just, like, able to do that. Like, she didn't have to work, which, 
great, you know, super jealous of that, but I uh, did not come from money, so I had to work uh, without an education, so I was doing, like, a lot of B-shift jobs, like, yeah. I was pumping gas for a couple of years, yeah. and so, like, conflicting schedules, you know, I was always, you know, more tired and, and cranky than she was, which, that, that'll, that'll wear into a relationship discreetly, but... It, Okay. perpetually over time did you notice that at the time or was that something looking back that you um looking back i know that i ignored it but i i was we were both somewhat aware of it but you know it's like we knew how to handle it no yeah. and you were adulting together and you were right. feeling good about being together yeah and going from there oh, and yeah. then what happened next um well uh, uh like i said you know our our families uh, had sort of grown together. Like we, you know, our mothers, our friends, so our families, you know, always talking to each other and, and always around and have that, you know, long standing rapport. Uh, so her and I, even if maybe earlier on we thought it wasn't going to work out, we just sort of lied to ourselves and tried to make it work out because neither of us wanted to, to be, you know, in that that awkward position or put our families in that sort of okay. position. But was there an expectation when you were younger that you might be together or was I'm sure there was a together? vague hope like you know, there's a you know sort of Disney-esque romanticism like wouldn't be cute if if you two made it and yeah lived happily ever and, after okay. yeah and so you were making it but also feeling like you didn't have to go through the meet the families and yeah. those stages you already had those but then once you were into it then what happened? Um, it just sort of, you know, time time did its work where, you know, the, the, the romance and the infatuation just sort of wore off. We realized, like, you know, we were, we were different people from each other. You know, we didn't know how to communicate, but we weren't, like, necessarily compatible as we and our families had hoped we would be. And uh, one of the, the major... Uh, things that started happening was all of her friends who were in our same age group uh, they were starting to get married in like fairly rapid succession okay uh, and no one wants to be the last person in their friend group not married okay, and so she would drop hints like that as if you know they were burning her hand like she would drop them two three times a day okay so and she really wanted to be married and not be one of the last yes, people in the friend group yes, to be married right and, and that's that's fair it's yep. understandable um, I did not want to be married. Uh, my brother had gotten married shortly before that, and it just looked awful. Uh, and I, I really didn't think I was built for it. So you had a model for marriage that didn't work for you, and you were yeah. learning more about yourself. She was learning more about herself. You were finding some things that were different from each other. Right. And one of the things that was different was she really wanted to be married at the time, and you clearly had mo a model and did not want to be married. Right. Uh, yes. Okay. So what sure. happened from there? Uh, I mean, it finally just got to that breaking point. It was like, you know, look, what are we doing? What's our next step? And I'm like, I feel like this is the last step. Yeah. I, I, let's, let's, you know, be honest. It's, I, I don't want to get married and you do want to get married. That's great. But you should be married to someone who is better. can like do it for you. And so we ended up going through the long and, and awful uh, breakup process. So you wanted her to be happy with somebody she wanted to be married with. Right. It wasn't necessarily you. And did she want the same uh, what you wanted for you also? I mean, she she was really, really hoping it would work out because her and I are both, you know, shy people, not not super social. Uh, the dating thing is a nightmare, especially when you have to start from scratch, and it's not someone you've known your entire life, and and no one loves jumping into that. So, so neither one of you were looking forward to moving right. on to anybody else. Yeah, it was. And she was hoping you would want what she wanted, which is to get married at the time, and yeah. then have your families be happily ever after, and her friend group, and you mm -hmm. coordinate with that. Okay. Yes. So that reached a breaking point. Which, what happened there, and what happened next? Uh, well, we, uh, you know, we, just that, you know, we, we ended up uh, breaking up. We, you know, s split the, the dog and cats and all that, and the, the DVD collection and such. We ended up moving back out eventually to, uh, to our parents' house. 
which would be the natural place you could right. go back to yeah. after living as adults and, and successfully doing it for a while, yeah. then going back to regroup and, and figure out. So is that how it ended, or what was the end? Um, well, it, I mean, when, you know, the, the year that followed, we, you know, we didn't, like, talk to each other or see each other, but we would see each other's parents frequently because, you know, her mother and my mother are still friends. Okay. So, like, we would hear about one another, and no one speaks ill of their child, so we just pictured each other doing much, much better without ourselves than, than the reality was, which... And that's what you would hear from each other's mother. Right, yeah. It. Okay. It's like, oh, she's back in college again. Great, good for her. I'm so happy for her. Just, you know, that, that sort of thing. Uh-huh. Uh, but, I mean... And yeah. that went on for about a year? Yeah, it's... We've been broken up now longer than we were together, so like that sort of edge is, is long worn off, and so we like, we don't mind hearing about each other. Okay. You know, um, okay. She's getting like bought a house, uh, I think, just recently with her her current boyfriend, and that's you know, great. Yeah, good as well. She should. Okay. And you still hear about from family and some of the family ties, but don't yeah. have the connection with each other. Right. Yeah. I mean, like I'll ask her mother not so much about her, but I'll ask her how the cat's doing. Right. So right. that was still a tie. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. Nice. Okay. So, so what do you think you learned from that relationship? Um. Three three main things, uh, in no particular order. One, if you're living with someone and you break up with them, and there's still eight months left on your lease, just move out. Don't try and wait out that eight months. That's okay. not that's not worth it. That doesn't help. Okay. Uh, number two, don't stick with someone just because you think it's what other people want you to do. Like mm -hmm. you know, I said, there was that that pressure, uh, subtly, albeit, uh, from our parents, and the you know unspoken expectation of us to do the whole you know once in a lifetime romantic, one person forever sort of marriage deal. Yeah. Because that that's just going to ruin both of our lives, and our parents are going to be dead and. 20 years anyway, so why not worth the investment? Yep, okay. And uh, the third one, I, I'm not, you know, I don't want to come off as like self righteous or vindicated or anything, but uh, a lot of her friends that had gotten married then in that uh, rapid succession uh, are super divorced now. So there's a little bit of like, oh, we'll follow your instinct. Okay. You know, don't, don't, you know, just do what everyone else is doing because they're doing it. And find yourself more before right. you go through that yes. process. Yes. All right. That sounds good. All right. Anything else you'd like to say before we wrap? Uh, I think I'm good. I probably said too much as it were already. But, okay. Uh, well, I, you're, you're comfortable with... Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. As soon as she sees me on camera, she's not going to watch it. Okay. She's not new. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much, TJ. I thank really appreciate it. Appreciate you being you. on Relationship Ready Talks. And comment, like, subscribe, and uh, we will see you all next time. Also, good luck with your relationships.